And so at the end of this current recording session, I've still got more I need to preview after this one. But for now, I'm going to be looking at the last four shows of this segment of recording and let you know what I think of them. And of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you thought of them as well. And I'll probably ignore your comments, the same way you're probably going to ignore this request to comment. But I am interested in reviewing what you think of this episode and also what you thought of the episodes I'm looking back today. So feel free to comment if you want to. Because this is a 2023 spring anime preview from a different perspective. First up today, we got a continuation of one of the best anime to air last year. We got Birdie Wing Goth Girl Story Season 2, an anime which I've described to many as basically sacky, but with golf. See, Birdie Wing follows the story of Ava and her golfing friend Aoi. Although, in the first season, they aren't really golfing friends, they are golfing rivals split by distance. How end up coming together, and as Evangeline ends up living in the same school as Aoi, and becoming effectively golfing partners. And at the end of the first season, we leave off with a tournament arc starting. And this one literally just carries on that tournament arc, as Evangeline and Aoi are now in the uh, semi-finals, trying to find their way into the finals to fight the super powerful golfing school. Now, everything I liked about the first season is back. The wacky zaniness of the first season has sort of gone away a bit. We're now into the superpowers, golfers using pseudo magic tricks to somehow make their golf work better. Aoi is very much a straight faced, pure golfer, although she does like using a massive shaft, a big golf club, which I think may be putting some strain on her body from the sounds of the first episode here. Whereas Evangeline is taught golf by one of the best golfers in the world and uses her plethora of rainbow bullets. For example, she tees off with her blue bullet, which is a super fast, super straight driving shot. And as we go through the anime, we learn which of her other bullets she uses and the strain it puts on her. For example, she, we get to see her sixth bullet in this one, the orange bullet, which apparently another character also uses a similar technique, which they call In The Zone, which basically lets them trace the path of the golf ball and control where it's going minutely, which is perfect for, for pitching shots. But is it a shot which Evangeline does not like using for some reason? I don't mind magic puts some kind of stress on her. But it's going to be an anime which shows our main characters learning about themselves, learning about their golf, and coming to terms with the restrictions they have in their method of play. Evangeline being a very instinctual, impulsive golfer, Aoi being a lot more controlled, a lot more determined, a lot more traditional. Where are we going with this one? Well, from the sounds of it, we're going into the second part of the tournament arc and we're going into a grand final against this super powerful school, the best school in the country. Will it be just a, an episode long duel between the two schools? Or will we go into a completely different arc after this one ends? I don't know. I'm interested in finding out. This is an anime which I clearly like. It's Yuri, it's Saki, it's golf. Only one of those things I'm not too keen on, which is golf, but given the other two, I'll happily watch it. It's anime I openly recommend to anyone who likes good anime. Give it a try. It's stupid in the right places, but it's got characters, it's got storyline, and it's watchable. Which I never thought I'd say about a golf anime, but here we are. If you do want to watch Birdie Wing, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. Next up today, we've got Rockado's Bad Girls, an anime where a bunch of kids are being bullied by some nasty kids in class. Main character. Rockado, as the name suggests, is friends with a pair of uh, geeks. You've got Masaru, or the Colonel, basically a military otaku it seems. And you've got Kota, who is this quite rotund character, and he's very much a traditional nerd. Whereas Rockado is our picked upon main character looking nerd. He doesn't particularly look geeky, but he just looks weak and they're forever being picked on by the bodies in class. Most notably, Haria and Tsubaki, the power couple in the class. Tsubaki being this cute gal, and is the object of admiration by everybody class, including our geeks. Unfortunately, she's also going out with Haru, and so any glances at Haru at um, her rely up results in 
more bullying, more hurt for the Geek Trio. Although, playing around Rockadoo's house one night, they get delivery from Rockadoo's grandpa. It's a random ninja scroll, which bestows on it the power of Rockado of unknown magics. What it turns out being is a magic which makes every bad girl suddenly find him the most attractive thing knowing. Yes, that does include our aforementioned Tsubaki. Unfortunately, it also includes the main female character, Rana Himawari, a Sukaban, a troublemaking whirlwind of destruction. She will just destroy people just for being bored. She doesn't need an excuse, she'll just attack anything which moves. As so in this whirlwind of destruction, suddenly finds smitten with Rokudo, anybody who tries to body Rokudo suddenly finds himself being destroyed as well. And whereas Rokudo was originally just this bullied on picked on kid, he's now going to control this uh, raging whirlwind next to him, which is completely smitten with him, and will destroy anything which gets near him if they look at him the wrong way. All while all the other bad girls, including our aforementioned QT Sabaki, also find him very attractive. This is going to be a sort of like semi harem. You can't, you can't exactly call it a harem because anybody who tries to get with our main character is going to meet the um, wrong end of a fist. But it's not going to be a very inspired one. It's very much innuendo, fan service, sexism based comedy. With the guys all having spiky hair and loud voices. The girls having an ample bosom and brightly coloured hair. This one is not an anime for me. Right now, Rokudo has an unbeatable defensive wall in the form of Rana. And that's just make the show boring in my opinion. However, if you are interested in watching Rokudo's Bad Girls, this one's airing over at Crunchyroll. Next up we've got an anime which I, I'll be honest, I did quite anticipate for this one. I don't read premises going into the anime, I just look at the artwork and the name. And the Cafe Terrace and its goddesses sounds like a very me show. It showed pictures of cute girls wearing um, sweet blue aprons working in a cafe. A pretty cute cafe sounding like it. Unfortunately, appearances can be deceiving as in the first minute of the anime, presented with a girl, a very attractive girl, wearing nothing but her underwear. And in the minute following this, we presented with the other, five, other four main female characters in various other states of undress. This is an anime which reminds me a lot of other similar shows of this nature where um, a normal male lead ends up having to cohabit with five, it's not it's always five, other female characters who all originally hate him and end up attacking him and throughout the entire premise of his show just they end up loving and they basically try and lust after him for every second of the day. It's wish fulfillment gone mad. It has similar traits going back as far as Love Hina crying out loud. I mean, if you heard what I just said and you thought Love Hina, you wouldn't be far wrong. Although this one, thankfully, isn't quite as violent as Love Hina. But the fan service is an up a notch higher as well. Now, other than that initial premise, I'll be honest, the rest of the anime is completely utterly a blur to me. I think the main character originally wants to destroy the cafe, which is inherited of his grandmother. And upon seeing the girls working so earnestly to try and save a cafe, he decides he'll give it a, sh he'll give it a try. Unfortunately, this will result in him living with these high hormones young ladies. Unfortunately, this will involve him living with these five highly sectioned ladies. But I'm sure, after a few episodes, he won't mind as much as they're trying to basically jump in his bed every five seconds. Not that stop one I'm trying to do it in the first episode. But it's not going to be an anime for most. It's going to be for fans. I'm not going to be among them. If you are interested in watching my Cafe Terrace and its goddesses, this one's airing over at Crunchyroll. Finally today we've got an anime which I heard some stuff about, I didn't know anything about it going into it, other than the name Magical Destroyers. This is a dystopian anime where some mysterious body has basically decided that all otaku are evil and they should be obliterated and put in what can only really be called concentration camps. And suddenly the otakus left over have to fight a resistance trying to save otaku and anime and manga and all the things I like. It's not just anime, it's any kind of otaku, military otaku, magical girl otaku, uh, train otaku, any kind of obsession like that. And you're ripe for picking to be plucked into these protection camps, they're called. And their uh, main characters want to 
save a world, create a world where you can like whatever you want to like, be whoever you want to be. And our main character is Otaku Hero, a generic Coke bottle glass otaku, the traditional kind of otaku with posters and his backpack and a cape. You've seen that type of otaku in anime before, you know what I'm talking about. In Genjikun, he would have been Madarame. And his three female cohorts the three magical girls. We only know one so far, well, technically we know two because one's rescued in the first episode. The main female white lead being Anarchy, or Magical Anarchy, or Magical Girl Anarchy, who is this crazy anarchistic bundle of cuteness, magical girl, although she's probably not really a magical girl, she just, her transformation sequences is as you're saying in costumes. And they're fighting off this army of robotic people with small bull heads with boo faces on them. I would say the bad guys, I've no idea about. There's some evil organization trying to stop Otaku going about. No idea what that's about either. There's gonna be gonna be something in the plot here, but the whole premise of it and the whole betrayal and, and show and tell of it is crazy. It's the same kind of crazy as Kill or Kill, just not quite as much over top. So you have triggerness about it. This is an anime which is definitely gonna divide opinions. Some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it just for how stupid it is. But whereas other shows I've reviewed this season so far have been stupid and that's been a bad thing, many of the I'll say it's stupid and it's a good thing. It gets a balance of stupidity to plot, to comedy, to action. Right, I was invested in Anarchy's readings from, for Otaku Hero and trying to get him to act when he doesn't want to act, he's down in the dumps. I was about to try to rescue her cohort, Magical Blue, who, from the sounds of the first episode, whereas Anarchy is an anarchistic magical girl, Magical Blue is a perverted magical girl, where she loves being gagged and wrapped up and tied up and yeah. I mean, that time Magic Girl has its fans, clearly Blue's one of them, Anarchy probably isn't. Anarchy is more about wearing spike collars, rock and roll outfits, heavily goth chick vibes, but goth chick wearing red, which is a very cool aesthetic. I'm going to be watching more Magical Destroyers, and I probably would recommend giving it a shot yourself as well. It's silly, but in a good way. It's airing over to Crunchyroll. And today we had Birdie Wing Goth Girl Story Season 2, Rockado's Bad Girls, the Cafe Terrace and its Goddesses, and Magical Destroyers. Let me know what you thought of in comments. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to join me on Twitch as I stream every day our streaming fit. Until next time, bye bye.